So let's talk about the Elmsley count. The Elmsley count is actually a false count that basically hides a single card. You can do it with a four card packet or you can do it with a five card packet. I'm just gonna be teaching the four card packet because it's something that everyone else does and I don't see basically anyone doing a five card packet variation of the Elmsley count. Uh, and also like it's not really like popular domain at this point for the five card packet Elms account so I'm not going to touch on it but I mentioned it so you can go ahead and look that up for yourself but yeah for me I'm just gonna be teaching the four card packet uh, Elms account so yeah um, so there's actually something that uh, <laughs> that's uh, interesting about the Elms account the Elms account is actually meant to hide the state of the playing cards and not actually uh, be shown as a count. I'm going to get into that a bit later on, but it does sort of relate to why I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the Elms account and why I don't do this move a lot. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to that a bit later on. So there's actually two routes for the Elms account. So two influences on Alex Elmsley for him to create the Elms account. And so one of those uh, influences was actually Edward Victor. Edward Victor created something called the I count. The I count was actually used in his routine, the I routine, which was first published in 1955. And uh, the second route for Alex Elmsley's uh, ghost count or the Elmsley count was actually something shown to him by Eric de la Mar. And Eric, Eric basically showed him uh, something called the fingertip block push-off count. And I'm not, I'm not actually sure when he showed it to him or when that move was first published, but it is a move that sort of influenced Alex Elmsley. So yeah, um, as far as I know for, for just the Elms account itself, it was actually first published, but it was not named in that uh, in that uh, routine. It was actually first uh, published in something called the Four Card Trick back in 1959. So that was published by Alex Elmsley, and it wasn't like called the Ghost Count or the Elms account or anything. It was just like sort of there, I guess, right? The name Elms account was actually first used by Di Vernon and Louis Ganson's uh, More Inner Secrets of Card Magic. So that was first published in 1960. So that was when uh, the name Alex uh, Elms account was actually first used. As far as I know, uh, the ghost count, I'm not too sure when it was actually first like used, right? It's always been like the Elms account. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Alex Elmsley himself gave it the name Ghost Count, but everyone else just sort of stuck with the Elmsley Count because Alex Elmsley made it, so Elmsley Count, right? I mean, that's how magicians sort of always are, but you know, that's, uh, that's that. So let's get into the basic mechanics of the Elms account. Well, for this, it's going to be relatively simple. You just want uh, basically a four card packet like so. And uh, yeah, you're gonna be hiding the third card. So the third card from the top. So it's, you're gonna be hiding this card. Or if you're doing it from a face up packet, you're gonna be hiding it from this card, right? This, this one card, right? But I'm gonna be teaching it face down because that's how I learned it. So I'm just gonna turn this card face up and you're gonna be able to see the main mechanics of the Elms account, like so, right? So, uh, to start off, you're gonna to want to start off in a dealer script. So this is just a regular dealer script. There's not really sort of anything that you want to change. Um, but yeah, you're, to start off, you're gonna to want to prep the top card. And to uh, prep the top card, you're basically just going to use your thumb and just, uh, like just lay it down on the top card, right? And through pure friction, when you move your thumb to the left, you're going to notice that the top card goes along with it and basically rotates off to the left, right? And you're going to realize that my, uh, this packet is basically propped up against the fat of my thumb over here, which basically gives it a pivot point. So when you, when you, uh, when you see like me prepping the card, you'll notice that it actually rotates around the fat on my thumb. So I'm just going to basically thumb off this card off to the left like so. And I'm just going to leave it just barely, right? Just barely off. So usually I would just do this, right? You can do more, but personally, I just like having it like less or whatever. It doesn't really sort of matter, but you know, the important thing is that you prep the card, right? And that's, uh, that's the most important thing. The next thing that you're going to do is that basically you're going to 
Uh, you're, going to, you're going to clip basically this entire packet in between of your index and your thumb, right? And you're going to release pressure with your middle ring and pinky finger, well, your left middle ring and pinky finger, and you're basically just going to expose the long edge. And what this allows you to do is that this allows you your right hand to basically come along and pinch the long edge of this packet just barely with your index and thumb, right? So I prepped the card and now I'm pinching everything with my index and thumb like so, right? So what this allows me to do is that as I pass this packet along with my prep card, what I can do is that now I basically clip this card in between of my index. So you can, it's basically like the third segment of my index around here, as well as the pad of my thumb. So over here. So uh, for everyone, uh, that's, uh, your hands might be different from mine, but this is like the same general area, right? So I'm basically clipping this card in between my index and thumb as I pass this packet into my right hand. And what this allows me to do is that now I can peel off this top card, right? And now it's clipped in between of my index and thumb, like so. And the very next thing that I can do is that now I can actually release pressure on my thumb. So I could just lift my thumb off of the card. And this allows the card to basically just slide into my hand. And you'll notice that it's not actually going to like any sort of grip in particular. It's actually just going into my hand, basically flattens out and just lays there. And you'll notice that it, it's sort of like in between of my fingers and my palm, uh, the palm of my hand. So it's just sort of laying there, right? And that's gonna be sort of important for, um, for, for the move itself. And I'll get into that a bit later on. But for now, let's concentrate on the block push off, which is basically the core of the move. And uh, I, I believe this part was uh, the part inspired by the fingertip block push off count by Eric Delamar. So it's this part. So what you're going to do is that you'll notice that I'm still pinching the cards, but with my index and my thumb. And what this allows me to do is that now I can actually pull my index backwards and push my thumb forward. And what this allows me to do is that now I can actually push off two cards as one, right? So you'll notice that now this packet, this top card, this top card over here is actually two cards like so, right? And what this allows me to do is basically just disguise one, uh, two cards as one. And uh, it, this hides this third card. So remember it was originally like this, and because I peel off this card and I'm doing a block push off, I'm actually hiding the third card from the top, like so. So this is the important part. This hides the third card from the top, right? And so now, uh, if you need any tips for the block push off, one tip that I can give you is that you want to basically flatten out your thumb, right? Because if your thumb is basically uh, flat with the rest of the card, you'll notice that it, it might actually sort of separate. Hold on, I, I'm trying to do it. But you'll notice that it might sort of separate if, uh, if my thumb is directly on top of this card, right? And that's not necessarily uh, something that you want, especially because you're supposed to be hiding that card. So what you can do is that you can actually sort of rotate your thumb off to the front, so like so, right? And you can sort of do this, right? Which now allows basically this part, this little, uh, this little uh, fad of your thumb over here to basically be the only part that's contacting the the long edge of the of the packet, right? So if you're just having this, then now when you do the pulling motion with your index and the pushing motion with your thumb, it's only this packet, this part of your thumb that contacts the long edge. And that allows you to basically seamlessly push off two cards as one, right? Rather than having like friction separate both cards, right? And that's the basically the important part of this, uh, this part, right? So now you have the block push off down. And basically you just practice it until you get it down. Um, uh, I mean, basically the role for it is basically uh, most of the move. So yeah. So now as you go to as your left hand goes to basically clip this card in the same position as you did before. So again, it's like index and thumb like so you're basically going to 
replace this card. Remember, it's like loose in your hand. Replace this card on the bottom of the packet like so as you go ahead and clip it. So you can see that I'm actually doing this, right? So I'm actually slipping it sort of back into my index and my thumb, right? So this sort of slips in there as I peel it off, right? So I'll redo it like so. So I prep the card, peel off one, block push off, and I replace it. So I basically just jam it into my index like so as I peel off uh, the block, right? So this basically replaces the third card from the from the top onto the bottom, right? So now, so now I have two cards over here in my left hand, in my left hand like so, and then I have two cards in my uh, right hand like so, right? So in motion, it actually looks like this, right? So yeah. So I peel off one, block push off replace this by jamming it into my index and thumb as I peel off both, right? And now from, from there, it's just extremely simple, right? You just push off this card as per usual. And then here I can use my thumb to just basically peel off this card on top of my double. And then I have this one card where I can just peel it off. And then, yeah, that's my, basically my Elms account, right? Now, if you're scared of someone seeing the offset in your left hand as you pass it into your right hand, what you can do is this. Rather than doing the offset first and then passing the, the packet into your right hand, what you can do is this. Just as you pass it, your the packet is still square, and then offset it as you, uh, you know, peel everything. So basically, the offset, the pass into your right hand, and then the peel is all basically in one smooth motion. So rather than doing offset, pass, and then peel, and then you do the Elms account or whatever. Oops, that was messed up. You're basically doing pass, offset, and then peel, right? So that's the general sort of uh, rhythm that you want, right? Rather than having like three separate things, you're just doing one. So it's just do this, right? So that's a lot simpler and it will hide the offset a lot better if I can manage to do it. There we go. And that's our uh, Elms account. So that's just a, I guess it's just sort of like a rhythm thing and we're sort of like just to solve a discrepancy but if you didn't like the offset this is an easy way to sort of solve it so uh, Dive Vernon actually had a second a different sort of handling for the for the Elms account and that's basically what we refer to as a fingertip Elms account the original is basically referred to as a dealer's grip Elms account but for for this one it's basically a, a fingertip Elms account so for the fingertip Elms account it's basically going to be the exact same thing but the only difference is that you're going to do it from a fingertips right from your left fingertips Right, so remember originally it was supposed to be in a dealer's grip. For this one, it's going to be uh, for, uh, cl uh, clipped by your index and your and your thumb. So it's basically just going to be like this, right? Same as usual, so it's sort of whatever. But it's basically just going to be the exact same thing, right? You, the only difference is that you can't really prep this packet. I mean, you can, you can just sort of like, um, you can't really prep it. <laughs> yeah, you can't really prep it. I mean, you can, clip it with both of your hands like so right and then you can sort of just peel off one right so it, and then it just goes like the original one right so you have both you do your block push off you replace this card and then you peel uh, off the your your double and then you just basically do the rest right so the only difference is that uh, this might be a bit harder for for a lot of people because of uh, yeah you just have a lot less support for for your cards right instead you have to use your fingertips only so it's the same thing you have your your fingertips gripping 
gripping the card, right, like so, just your left hand, you're gonna come over with your right hand and you're going to uh, uh, basically pinch the other side with your right hand as well. So you have this. And what you can do now is, uh, yeah, you're just going to apply a bit more pressure with your right hand. So now you can actually just peel off this this one card without disrupting the rest of the packet. So that's the main uh, main difference, right? And now you just do a block push off, replace everything as you uh, count both, count another card, and then count the other card. So now you have basically the same move, but done in a sort of different grip. I prefer the dealer's grip variation, but some people like to do it from the fingertips. And that includes the professor himself. So if Di Vernon does it, then maybe uh, some people might find it preferable. But personally, I don't really enjoy it that much. So yeah. Now, rather than the uh, the offset, what Alex Emsley himself did was actually a sort of different grip from what we see nowadays. So if you can see in your INR left hand, when you pass cards into your uh, right hand and then like just pass into your left hand, the card is still relatively in a, I guess, similar esque dealer's grip, right? But re what Alex Elmsley did was that when he grabbed the cards, they, it, the cards were actually in a completely different grip. So uh, this was in the collected works of Alex Elmsley. So this is, I do have to give credit to that book, but I'm not gonna teach everything about that, uh, that move that was described over there. So the ghost count or whatever that the, uh, the original ghost count rather that Alex Elmsley did was actually in this specific grip. So after he's done passing the cards in his right hand, he actually didn't need to offset this card and that's because this particular grip actually allowed him to peel off one card one by one while this pack can remain square right and it's this grip over here right so what's different about this grip is that now his index is actually curled around the upper left corner of this packet over here and you can see that this corner is actually sinking into the second like section of my index over here and here my middle ring and pinky finger are just curled like beneath of the card. My thumb is just like resting on top of the packet, but uh, it's still like sort of applying like some, a bit of friction and just so that I can like start peeling cards off, right? So I have this in my right hand in, in the normal pinch position without any sort of like offset, right? Once I do this here, my index plays the role of basically a stopper. So everything this in this packet is now square, right? And you can even use the uh, this knuckle over here to sort of like bang against the left long edge of this packet so then everything remains square. And now your thumb is just resting on top, right? And it's in the same position as these four. But because of this stopper and because of your thumb's friction, what this means is that now, when I move my left hand off to the side with my thumb, over here, this means that now only one card goes and I don't even need an offset for it. So over here you can see that this index is stopping the rest of the cards from going and the thumb just acts as like, I guess like <laughs> just to use like friction, you just drag it off to the side and that's one card, okay? And now we're in this position. Here, just gonna do the Elms account as per usual. You're just gonna pass this card down below you're just gonna push this card off, right? So you're just gonna do the block push off again, and you're just gonna do the same exact thing. So that's the different sort of grip that Alex Emsley sort of used.
So there's actually another variation of the Elms account, which is actually called the Underground Elms account. This was by Phil Goldstein or Max Maven, who passed away last year. So uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I actually thought of this independently. And the reason why I actually thought of this independently was actually because of Bob Wieser. Bob Wieser had a move called the Wieser concept, which basically accomplished the same thing as the Elms account, but the only difference was that uh, it was in a different grip and the handling was different as well. So basically there's nothing similar with it except for like the main, uh, the main, uh, except for what it does, right? So it basically looks like this. Right, and that's the Visor concept. And so you'll notice that for the Visor concept, I actually replaced the top card on the bottom, right? And so that was like my main influence for this. But then turns out like Phil Goldstein actually published this way before. So he actually published this in the Classic Magic of Larry Jennings back in 1986. So it has been a while. But for the Underground Elms account, it's basically just going to be the exact same thing. But rather than placing this last card on top of this packet, as I usually do, as you usually do, as everyone else usually does, you're actually going to take this card, actually just going to replace it on the bottom of the packet like so, right? And that's basically the only difference. But now what you'll notice is that by replacing this card onto the bottom of this packet, we're basically in a position to do another Elms account. So you can, uh, so when you uh, when you do a normal Elms account, you'll notice that I'm actually uh, displacing this card onto the bottom, right? So for a normal Elms account, I'm actually just doing this, right? And this card is now on the bottom. But if you replace the top card, right, onto the bottom again, you'll notice that now this card is back to the third from the top position, which is perfect because now I can do uh, basically anything else. I can basically do um, the Elms account and not a Jordan count. So that's great, right? So that's the only difference uh, between a normal Elms account and the underground Elms account. So treat it well and yeah, take, uh, you, you know, just do, do what you need with it. So yeah. So there, there's actually a couple of touches that I wanted to touch on for the Elms account. And one includes leaving the cards basically just sort of messy. So basically just doing sort of like this, right? And you can actually let this card sort of like become separated from, uh, from the rest of the packet, right? Just a bit, right? So you can actually have this card, right? Just sort of be messy, just a bit, right? So you can see that this card is not actually flush a bit as long as you don't show the ind uh, index over here. And so you'll notice that this white part of the card actually sort of acts as like the border of it, right? Of the cards, right? So you don't want to show too much of it, but now people can see that there's four cards, but because every other card has like sort of a border and everything, it sort of blends in. So having a border sort of like just showing like this part of the card sort of like shows that there's four cards, but you know, it, it is like, it, it is face down because of uh, the border, right? And this is sort of like a, a subtlety by Escanio. So Arturo de Escanio, so he does things with like borders. And so, yeah, you can just sort of leave this card sort of sticking out a bit, as long as it's just like the white part, right? So this, this basically camouflages as the border, right? And as long as you don't show this part, then you know, you're good to go. So you can sort of leave it messy and you know, that's all good. So that's something that you can do. The other thing that you can do is again by Escanio. Uh, I like my Escanio stuff, but it's something called, um, it's something related to the burning double. And it's basically, uh, basically just tabling the Elms account. So what I mean is this, right? You, you do your Elms account and now you, you sort of leave it sort of messy. But now what you can do is that you're going to grip this packet in sort of a middle grip. So your thumb and your middle finger is actually going to grip 
the center of the short edges of the packet like so right and what we're going to do is that you're just going to release both your index and your thumb at the same time and what this allows you to do is now this just pops down the packet and the cards don't go anywhere it just lands directly like that and so what this allows you to do is now now this tables the packet and just leaves it as is right so you don't have to do any sort of like weird like lay down or anything right you just do your elms account right you can do your underground elms account just grip it in a build grip release everything and there we go you just tabled the packet you don't have to do anything bizarre and so yeah you can sort of leave it messy as well right and if you even have the border subtlety so something like this uh sorry let me just <laughs> let me just do this real quickly so if you have this then now everyone can see that there was actually four cards but you're tabling it and you're just sort of leaving it very casual and you go ahead and speak and so you have this and you know it's it's that right Another th subtlety that you can do, or another thing that you can do, is something by Juan Tamariz. And this is something he calls, uh, eh, he doesn't really call it anything, but it's something you can do and is breaking up the rhythm of the Elms account. So what we can do is that actually, as you do the Elms account, what you can do is that you actually break up the rhythm. And what this means is that you can count one, you can then look up or do anything else, and you can count the rest of the cards, right? So you're basically just going to separate the moments of the Elms account, right? So you can count one, talk a bit, do whatever, right? And then count two, right? Re as you like replace everything and then talk a bit more and then count the rest, right? So you're basically breaking up the rhythm of the Elms account. Juan Tamariz does it on count three, I believe. And he looks up just for misdirection and whatnot. So you can go ahead and uh, do with that uh, what you will. But... Again, you don't have to do the Elms account like this, right? You don't have to be stuck doing it like, like this, right? What you can do is, uh, you know, just break up the rhythm, right? Just do some different things, right? And so that, I think, uh, depending on how your routine goes or how your effect goes, right? Uh, you can break up the rhythm and it might flow a bit better for, for, uh, for, your, for your movements and whatnot. So, yeah. So, uh, fundamentally, the Elms account is actually a displacement. So, for a displacement, uh, actually, let me just get my uh, four different cards real quickly. Right, so fundamentally, the Elms account is actually a displacement. So, it actually displaces the top card to the, uh, the top card to the top, the second card to the third, the third card to the fourth, and then the fourth card goes to the second. So, keep track of all these cards. So when I do an Elms account, right, you'll notice that now the top card goes back to the top, right? The uh, the second goes to the third, the third card goes to the fourth, and the fourth goes to the second. So what this means is, uh, it's just yeah, it's just a displacement. So if you ever need to shuffle the cards uh, discreetly or whatever, you can do an Elms account. Uh, why? I don't know, but you know that's something you can do. But uh, you can also basically use it as a um, to hide the card. I know, shocking that the Elms account would be used to hide the card. But uh, obviously, for for people, you uh, for people you would use it to basically set up an effect. So like uh, you would do it like this, and then you would set it up for for like an oil and water or whatever, right? But what you can do is that because this card is displaced to the bottom right so as i mentioned before this also acts as a displacement so because this card the card that you're supposed to hide goes to the bottom what this means is that if you're done doing like a three card money or whatever you need to get rid of a gaff card right you can do the elms account so pretend you're double backer or double facer or whatever card that you need to hide Right, you can do an Elms account, right? Have some misdirection, break up the rhythm, do the Elms account, right? So you so now you showed three normal cards and you displace this gaff card onto the bottom. What you can then do is do a a bottom palm, or I mean, I taught one like a couple uh, a while back, I taught the Hofzinser bottom palm, so go ahead and check that out. But you can do a bottom palm, right? 
get rid of the gaff card or whatever that you're supposed to, uh, the, the dirty card, and they could just, you know, just show all these three cards cleanly, right? Because you displace this card to the bottom, which now gives you the perfect opportunity to steal it out and do whatever, whatever with it. So that is another use for the Elms account. Uh, yeah, it's just basically um, just prepping the gaff card to the bottom. Oh, whoops, I just did an underground Ems account. But you can basically just prep the card. You can hide the gaff card, move it to the bottom, and then just just table it and then just palm this card, right? And then you're left clean. So that is another use for the Elms account that people don't really take into consideration. I mean, if you're if you're stuck in this position, that's sort of a that's sort of a bad position to be in. So you know, you sort of want to uh, sort of want to end up like this, right? Where you can cleanly bottom palm the card, and then that's uh, that's where it is, right? So yeah. So let's talk about the actual use of the Elms account. The actual use of the Elms account is actually to display the state of the cards. So my biggest gripe when it comes to basically the Elms account is that people count out the cards, which is uh, interesting. So I'll actually show uh, show an example using the four aces because that's um, that's the most relevant. So I don't see uh, see a lot of people doing it, but I do see some people doing it. So I'll uh, I'll give you a an example. So over here, you'll actually notice uh, uh, my four aces. So pretend like this card is actually like face down or something, right? And so I'm trying to hide it. And so I actually go like, here, I actually have four aces here. One, two, three, four aces, right? And that's just why it doesn't really sort of make sense because again, you, you have your aces, right? You have an ace on top. Right, and you see, why do you need to count out the aces? You obviously have four aces, right? I mean, who like if you have like a four card packet and you say like you have four aces and all three other cards are aces, then naturally you have four aces, right? It's uh, your spe your mind fills in a lot of blanks that you sort of don't realize, so you don't have to overprove and count everything out because you know it's uh it's not necessary, so. Yeah, but um, it's not. A, but you should count out the cards when it's relevant to the routine. So Elmsley only basically said the numbers of the cards when he wanted the audience to pay attention to the amount of cards. So, for example, if he did like, I don't know, if he did like a vanish or something, I don't know, right? <laughs> I, I'm not actually sure if he did a vanish, but like if he did this, right? So now I have three cards, right? So pretend he had like, uh, he had four cards or whatever, one, two, three, four. And now watch, now I have three cards, right? So you can do sort of something, something like that. Or if you want to pay attention to the, to where the card in the, uh, uh, to where the, um, to where a card in the packet was. So again, this is, this acts as a displacement. So take that as you will. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, but yeah. So it can obviously be used to display face up and face down playing cards. So again, I have a packet of face up cards, right? Right. So if you're doing something like oil and water or something like that, right? So you have everything face up. So. I have a packet over here of cards, of face up cards, and you'll show everything as face up, but actually you have this, right? Or if you really wanted, uh, you can have, um, if you're doing oil and water, for example, you have this, and you want to show that you all have like black cards, here I have a packet of black cards, right? You can do something like that. Again, I'm not explicitly saying the number of cards, but I am like, uh, like, uh, sort of addressing them, but I'm not counting them out, right? It's called the Elms account, but you shouldn't have to count out the cards. So keep that in mind. So my main gripe with the move is that there's so much counting, but for what, right? If you really want to show the cards, you would just do this, right? Here I have four aces, right? That's, that's it, right? I wouldn't have to go like, here I have four aces, right? And that's a lot of motion for basically something that's very simple, right? You wouldn't have to count up the cards. You would just spread them out like so. 
And so we're basically counting because again, it's part of the method and we need the method to achieve uh, an effect. And so realistically, who really does this, right? <laughs> there, no one does this, right? Everyone would just do this, right? Like, oh yeah, I have four, four cards. And that's that, right? No one really does it, but we do it because again, we need it for the method. And so, yeah, that's my main gripe with the Elms account. Uh, it's necessary, but I don't really like. So yeah, if you find a better method for the Elms account or anything like that, uh, go ahead and use it. I mean, personally, I don't think, uh, I, I, I mean, I have, uh, other moves besides the Elms account to use so uh, that's not really that big of a loss for me but personally I would try and find a workaround uh, whatever this is I mean there's plenty of moves that are sort of like accomplished sort of the same thing that the Elms account does and um, yeah you just don't have to always be forced to use the Elms account the reason why people use the Elms account so much is probably because of how like popular it is. I mean, everyone made a tutorial on it, so it's just sort of whatever. And also another gripe is, um, why is this card, why is it the third card that's, uh, that's being hidden, right? That's sort of an inconvenient spot for a hidden card to be, right? Because if you, if you realistically, like, uh, sorry, not realistically, but like, if you're, if you're going to steal a card, for example, so you have a three card packet or whatever, you want to steal a card, right? This card is going to end up on the bottom right which means that if you want to do an elms account you're gonna have to do this peel off and then do the elms account right which is sort of dumb so i'm not necessarily the biggest fan of it it's sort of a lot of uh, of stuff just to have a card uh, just to hide a card right i mean if you really want to do that then just you know just you know <laughs> it's uh, yeah it just doesn't make sense because there's so much that's uh that's just off about it it's just really bizarre to me that you would need to do this peel and then do the elms account i mean just do like a jordan count at this point like it's i, I don't know right so for further reading, if you want to learn more about the Elms account, there's a, a whole bunch of resources on the uh, on the Elms account. So one is obviously the Alex Elmsley lecture, which you can download on Vanishing Inc. The other thing is uh, more inner secrets by uh, of card magic by Lewis Ganson and Di Vernon. I believe it is uh, sold as a ebook on library, so go ahead and check that out. You can also go look at the Howard Hamburg uh, Penguin Live Lecture. There he teaches the Visa concept. So if you want to learn more on the Visa concept, feel free to check that out. Uh, there's the Classic Magic of Larry Jennings, written by Mike Maxwell. Uh, again, that is also sold as an ebook, so go ahead and check that out. It's no longer sold as like a physical uh, thing, so yeah. Uh, there's also the Complete Works of Derek Dingle by Richard Kaufman, uh, which is sold out, but he actually opened a pre-order for it, so I believe it's supposed to be like near the end of June that's like being shipped out. So if you order it as a pre-order, you can save actually $20, so yeah. I'm actually not sure when this video is coming out, so uh, by the time this comes out, it could already be available. So uh, yeah, go ahead and check out the complete works of Derek Dingle by uh, Richard Kaufman. Uh, and then uh, there's also the Best of Friends Volume 2 by Harry Lorraine, which is uh, sold as an ebook again. And then there's Mint Volume 1 by Ed Marlowe, which has just been recently reprinted with Vanishing Ink. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, actually, I'm not even sure if it's Vanishing Ink that reprinted it. I'm pretty sure it's like just Murphy's in general. So, you know, uh, you could go ahead and check out Mint Volume 1. And so, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not a move that uh, I like, but one that I enjoy studying because it's it's a popular move and you have to wonder why such like sort of an inconvenient move became sort of so popular. So it's a move that I, I enjoy studying. So, I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of problems with the Elms account, but you don't have, uh, but even like despite all its problems and whatnot, I do think that it is a useful move and I do sort of understand why it grew in popularity. I mean, it's uh, it's a useful move, but I do think there are better alternatives to it. And so, yeah, feel free to discover more of those. And yeah, that I think that's about it. Um, stay healthy, stay safe, and um, everything else. So yeah, see you guys next time.